Okay. Okay. So I think we can start now. Let me present the document. Uh, okay. Okay, great. So I hope uh, you all went went through the document I sent you last night. So as I mentioned, most of it uh, will be most of the work will be engaging will be on getting your application out there uh, tirelessly and uh, well supporting each other as well. So so our work will be guiding you as we won't be engaging in putting your application materials together. So as mentioned on the document, within this uh, 12 weeks, we aim to get all your application materials uh, ready and also error free within the first two weeks uh, on the first month. So you can quickly jump to applying to jobs. So we'll just uh, go through the list of application materials on this document. So, okay, so we have CV preparation. You need to attend the tutorial, revise, and, and also submit, resubmit the CV after our team's feedback, and it needs to be fully approved by the team. And for LinkedIn, it's it also applies the same. We have CV, LinkedIn, GitHub, organizing your GitHub uh, repository, and also your profile as well, same. Uh, for the uh, GitHub also, it needs to be approved by our team so that it uh, has the level of, uh, well, how, do you, how do I say it, how do I say it, the level of uh, quality it needs for a global level job. So we, next we will also have the cover letter. We will also prepare the, a, a template for a cover letter, which you will use adjusting for each application so you'll be uh, for each job you'll be applying so you will also need it to be approved by the 10 academy team and you will also uh, engage in applying to 200 jobs for the first month meaning you'll be uh, in, you'll be working on getting your application materials ready for the first two weeks and for the rest of uh, two weeks left during the first phase, which is the first month, you'll be working on applying to at least 200 uh, good jobs. And the other one Arun was talking about was on advancing your skills for the respective track you've chosen, which uh, our framework is the TPF plan, which is tools, platforms, and frameworks you'll need to advance for uh, the track you've chosen. So we will we'll, we will be doing this after uh, confirming your track, and uh, we will probably engage in this after maybe this week, at the end of this week, or maybe uh, next week. But we will have some introduction on Wednesday, hopefully, and we will also have group bonding sessions so that uh, you will be supporting each other since uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's mostly going to be uh, something you'll do alone. So you'll need to have someone to keep you accountable and just, uh, you know, move on uh, through the process. So you'll be having this uh, group bonding sessions after your track, your track is uh, confirmed or announced. And then we'll be working on uh, grouping you into maybe three to four people. So we'll be also announcing this after your uh, your track confirmation. So we have our daily stand-up calls. Uh, we will definitely engage in this uh, daily calls, for maybe for the first month, I hope, because we need to get your application materials ready and uh, complete. So we will definitely want you to engage in uh, most of the calls, not missing uh, five sessions per month, meaning we want at least 60% uh, attendance from uh, your site. So uh, well, I've also put it on the document, so failure to meet the requirement uh, if you're not uh, willing to get your application materials ready or if you're not willing to hit your job application targets, you will be forced to drop out of the program 
since our role is uh, to provide support and guidance, not to engage in crafting individual application materials or, or just push you to apply to jobs. So we want you to take ownership of your uh, job search efforts and it's mostly going to be uh, more about your uh, efforts, not in, uh, you know, our, we're supposed to just guide you and just give you directions. We, we won't be giving you the weekly challenges or anything else. We will just help you on uh, improving your skills and also getting your application out there. So, yeah. So, I think that's all. Um, and we will be providing you with guidelines and tutorials as we progress uh, through the job search phase. So I just wanted to give you an overview. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. If not, we can move on to the choosing the right track session. It's going to be a quick session with MTNON and Ramit. They have, uh, we have prepared a form so that you'll be able to submit and analyze your skills and uh, we just want you to be uh, honest with yourself and just uh, choose the track according to your uh, ability or knowledge or skill you have. So that's uh, what we want to do. So I think that's all. Um, if you have any questions. Okay. Okay, then. Um, over to you, uh, Ramit and Tina. Let me take down my presentation. Uh, okay, thank you, Rodis. Uh, Rodis. So, as Rodis was uh, talking about, or, or said, as she said, like today, I will be filling this uh, career evaluate track evaluation uh, form, where it's it's supposed to help you and help us help you basically choose your track. So. Let me share my screen just in a bit. Um, one second. Oh, sorry. So the form basically. Okay, so just to check, uh, can you hear me well? I lost uh, a little, little connect problem. Sorry, and you can see my screen, I suppose. And if there is anything, uh, like uh, just let me know if there is any issue. Uh, so yes, so at the end, um, I can actually show you the the form quickly, just to. Like it's, this is just going to be like you're going to be answering um, like to like telling telling us what your first choice of track is, and then you're going to be assessing your skills on like several many like um, tools and um, concepts also related to each uh, track, and um, by the end it's supposed to like give you understanding on how like where you stand with respect to each of those, each of these tracks. So for now, I'm just going to, we are going to be, I'm going to be like, um, maybe explain a little bit of what each track is needs, basically the basic skills that are needed or the basic concepts that are needed there. Like, I mean, you should know this already, but like, just to clarify, and uh, specifically if you have any questions about that, and um so i just a, a very short um presentation about this so um okay right so um let me just check for a second 
Um, you hear, you still hear me, right? Um, so, yeah, so you, you are, of course, choosing one of these four tracks. It's machine learning engineering, data engineering, Web3, engineering, and generative AI. And uh, as Rodas was ma mentioned, and like I mentioned also, once you choose a track, you're going to be focusing on that one because like it's, it's really difficult to, um, the thing is that you will have to, um, prepare your all your application materials, your CV, your your profile, everything should be like really prepared for that particular track. And if if you want like uh, to work on more than one track than this, that means you'll have to put the double effort and have double materials. So that like why it's really it will be super difficult. So it's advisable to just focus on one and work on that. So yeah, um, this, was, this is what I mentioned, like this is what we will have to do, prepare all the materials targeted for that track. And uh, like once you choose a track, prepare your materials for that track, and then you'll have to like evaluate your skills, the basic skills that are needed. And then of course you're going uh, to try to improve the skills. You can, you can go through all your past projects relevant to the track and then you you can think about if you want to improve them uh if you want to work on more projects related to it while you're applying for job um so starting with machine learning engineering um so if you are applying for machine learning engineering jobs there are three like key areas you have to understand so you have software engineering so this is really uh uh, like you have to have a good software engineering uh, skills and uh, and background. So this includes testing. Like you have to have familiarity with like uh, uh, well not familiarity. You have to have really good coding skills in Python, JavaScript, and uh, like using um, agile methodology and testing, um, applying all of that. So having a strong or stronger uh, software engineering background will be better for, for machine learning engineering. Um, of course, uh, you have to also understand machine learning. You have to understand how models, prediction, optimization, like work for, and, um, and specifically for key uh, business cases. Um, you have to have like how the machine learning algorithm work, how like the deep learning, um, neural network, computer vision uh, algorithms, how, how they work. You have to have a deeper understanding of how these things work. Uh, you either have this already or you should really work on that. Uh, if, if machine learning is, 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 your, um, is your track of choice. Um, so like you have all of these uh, different algorithms, you have like uh, the keywords here are like TensorFlow, Skip Learn, um, um, okay, and then the other thing for this is machine learning, but there is machine learning deployment. It's like how to translate your models, prediction optimization into an end-to-end -end, uh, deployment, right? Uh, so this is like you have to include automation and like uh, dashboarding. Um, and uh, like um, MLOps with uh, which is like the whole integration with um, with like the data engineering part and uh, um, uh, with, with with the machine learning machine learning engineering part. Okay, so this is a basic thing for for machine learning uh, machine learning engineering, and uh, there is a list of uh, skills or like tools different tools or different concepts that you have to you'll find like some of them in the form so these are the basic things then you, you will have to rate yourself honestly because this is for you you, you are you know it is the form is supposed to help you uh, assess yourself so be honest with yourself assess like when you are assessing your python skills or your understanding on deep learning 
assess yourself uh, honestly and rate yourself from like uh, poor to excellent um yeah so um, okay so it, for the goal of like uh, knowing uh, what you need to work on and uh, and whether like uh, in the end of things if this track is suitable for you or not um okay so i will move on to the data engineering part so okay so for data engineering data engineering and machine learning and i are are two different tracks but they have connections so you'll find that there are things that are shared between the two but of course like the main thing that you have to know about is that the understanding how to build and optimize a scalable uh, data pipelines uh with the reliance on sql so the um, machine learning engineering you need to know some sql for data engineering you really need to be proficient in sql okay so it's like the level of the skill is, is different you will find that there are a lot of uh, overlap between data engineering and machine learning engineering and even like with generative ai and stuff but the focus and the level of uh, the skill required of, for a particular tool or language would be different. So, for example, I'm talking here about SQL. SQL for data engineering is really, really important, and you have to be proficient um, while a basic understanding or basic uh, level of skills is enough for for uh, machine learning engineering. Um, yeah. So these, like um, uh, the next, uh, of course, uh, again. So you find like you. As a data engineer, you need, still need to have an understanding of how machine learning and machine learning deployment work. It's just less emphasis, but because uh, data, uh, like uh, building data pipelines, uh, like or machine learning uh, and data data engineering, uh, data engineers and machine learning engineers work together, uh, and so these data pipelines that are built, uh, a lot of the times that are they are like for machine, machine learning uh, models or machine learning applications. So you have to have a basic understanding of these things as well. Um, uh, so these are like shared. And um, uh, yeah, so that's basically, yeah. And uh, like uh, what is specific, um, like the specific experience that you need to demonstrate is like uh, in pipelining, building, monitoring, and scheduling the like the data pipelines. Uh, like in this, like that would include scheduling um, tools like Airflow, um, and these are like a, a list of other tools that you might. Okay, so uh, these uh, other tools that you need at least to be like uh, for each kind of. Uh, job you list you need to have at least uh, to how to use at least one tool and then be familiar with the other tools at least uh, to know which tool uh, like what to which sorry uh, what each tool does even if you like uh, you will find that there are different scheduling uh, for example scheduling uh, tools you can use like be proficient in Airflow but then you can like. Um, know others be familiar with others uh the other thing is that um, sql and nosql databases so these include like um uh relational databases and uh, then of course like here yeah, like mongodb we have like document databases uh table family databases graphical databases um key key value databases these are not no sql databases so you need to know and use at least uh, one tool for each kind of um so these are just like a, a few this you don't even have a, a, a example for each type of database but okay uh, you need to know about this you need to be familiar with it you need to learn uh, like this should be a goal you don't need to have this right now maybe you don't have this right now but this should be your goal uh, so you need to know about visualization tools. So these are, of course, a few, but um, there are others, extremely, and other examples you might have come across. Okay. 
so yeah that's it for the basic for the basic uh, um, things so um, maybe uh, you will find I'll just this go through the sections for for um, in the form for machine learning and that engineering so you'll find here this is that engineering um, section you'll you'll be asked to assess yourself on like programming languages and uh, some tools are you like um, the options you have are sorry, um, um, like from poor to excellent and then you also have option to familiar or not familiar this is for concepts um, like if the concept you're familiar with it you're really familiar with that you you know you think you know enough about you can use choose familiar or if you don't haven't heard of it or you don't know much just use not familiar um so these are different uh, tools and um yeah different basic skills that are needed for the engineering i find like uh, and again as, as i said um when you look at machine learning you'll find that there are different tools here um like this flow like uh, this machine learning algorithms uh, or libraries uh, concepts like a b testing and um but sorry. uh you want to say yeah so there are some overlap because these are things that are basic and are needed for both but um there are most of, because here the focus is only on the basic stuff uh or we try to be to focus on all the basic stuff so you'll find like um maybe um not everything is there but yeah anyway um so I did, there is a particular question about machine learning and the thing data machine learning engineering or data engineering um otherwise Um, Rahmat, are you there? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, okay, so I can maybe present on generative AI and the few and what we stop sharing. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm my voice is a double right, so I just can share my screen okay so i'm gonna give presentation on generative in ai in web3 career pass you can see my screen probably right So in generative AI, let's start uh, from generative AI. So in this particular track, uh, there are some crucial uh, skills that you have to be proficient on. Uh, in regarding to your software engineering skill, you need to improve your skill on Python, JavaScript, SQL. So I'm not going to emphasize more on SQL, but it, it's important to have some knowledge on it. and. Before saying anything else, every requirement that you can mention on machine learning is also needed in generative AI. They are practically the same areas. Also, uh, you have to think generative AI in machine learning uh, hand in hand career pauses. So, the skills that you have there are also important here. So, in addition to the machine learning requirement, these are the things that she also mentioned TensorFlow, PyTorch, Transformers. Uh, try to improve your skills in that, in that area in your software testing skill testing is really important testing can be unit testing integrate testing and uh, the whole application testing so uh, improve your skill on those regards in the software engineering perspective and also be familiar with the agile, the agile methodology which is the project management when you build an application so try to read the concept behind that is uh, an important skill to have 
the other would be uh, the, in the generative AI um, specification, you have to be also familiar with the models that generative AI used, which you already have used in your project, like ChatGPT, OpenAI, LangChain, Llama Index. So there are a lot of these models you have to be uh, familiar with, at least have a solid understanding of these models, their background, their functional principle, architecture of a model that are considered generative AI. So try to have some proficiency in this regard. And for deployment integration, you should have the basic, at least a solid, a solid knowledge or be comfortable in how machine learning models deployment work, uh, how to deploy them, uh, be familiar also or comfortable with AWS GCP for scalable development, deployment and integration. So, so try to have some kind of skill improvement on these areas. Uh, the other requirement, in addition to the machine learning requirement for generative AI, you have to improve your skill in, in prompt design for prompt engineering. Prompt is really important in the gen in generative AI perspective. So try to uh, improve your skill on designing a better prompts. Uh, try also uh, improve your skills on vector databases. There are a lot of vector databases. Try to see the difference in which is better or not. Just have a professional knowledge in vector database also for interviews and even for yourself as a generative AI developer. So try to read more about uh, the difference between vector databases that are currently available. And work on, okay, Rudolf, you can ask. Okay, yeah, uh, sorry for interrupting you. I just wanted to, to make the presentation in slideshow mode. Right, Thank okay, you. sorry, Thank you for getting that. Okay. So the other would be evaluation matrix like Ragas and others try to see the difference, which is better or not, have just uh, the knowledge on evaluation matrix as a generative AI engineer or developer. Uh, try to be comfortable with uh, hugging face with every use case hugging face can provide uh, so try to be also comfortable in that one on models the one that i already mentioned generative ai models know them understand them experiment with them uh, fine tuning which you already know and work pipeline uh, also be comfortable with not all but pick one and be comfortable with fr fronted frameworks how you should style, especially in generative AI, you can, chances would be high to also build a front end up for the generative AI that you have done. So try to pick one framework and stick with understanding that. Uh, also work on style sheet, language like CSS, Tailwind, just pick one and stick with understanding to be, to have a better skill in front end frameworks uh, and also have a knowledge and back end frameworks. So these requirements can give you at least a better uh, portfolio or better uh, level as a junior developer in generative AI. So what are the possible positions you can find as a generative AI developer? You can be a, an AI artificial intelligence researcher. Uh, you, since it's a new technology, the researching jobs are available as an, uh, in AI. So you can be that, you can be an AI software engineer where you build projects that are that contain AI, generative AI um, algorithms or use cases. So you can also be a machine learning engineer in, combina in, combine, in combination with AI. Uh, you can be a creative technologist. I mean, there isn't any uh, a particular job that's named creative in, uh, technologies for AI, but you can find a job it, through it. I mean, there are jobs as creative technologies, which uh, there are people who focus on in, innovation and creativity in different areas. It could be in art, it could be in designing, it could be in different areas. There are people who are named creative technologists, but in the area of, in the, in this, in the current um, situation of the world where AI is more popular right now, they might need AI uh, engineers as a creative technologist also to help them build these arts or designs using these generative AI models. So
So you might find a job through that. So look upon, depending on the company's requirement, you can find a job if they need this, uh, someone who has a background in AI to help them create uh, any of the part, the company's needs. It could be an art design, like I said. Uh, you can also be an AI ethics. So I have put links to understand more about what these people do. Uh, the AI ethics, like its name, it's, uh, there are people who under have a better understanding on AI and they uh, draft or design ethics, ethical uh, rules and guides for AI in the development world. So you can be also have a position in that regard. So uh, I will share this slide. You can read up on what NI ethics do. Uh, there are there could be another other positions also they might need AI engineers. So try to see uh, on the internet search what you can be with the knowledge that you have as an AI generative uh, developer or engineer. So the next would be, we'll see web stream engineering. So uh, again, the crucial proficiencies you have would be if you decide to take the career path as a web stream developer, improve your skill on Python. Uh, they are especially from the two blockchains you have, you have learned in this training. Python can be helpful on the algorithm blockchain, JavaScript also on the algorithm blockchain. And understanding of JavaScript also helps to understand Solidity better, which helps you if you are decide to take a career path on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, you need to have testing, agile development, understanding. Again, uh, you have to be uh, on building smart contracts. You need to improve your skills on creating the smart contracts in, the, in different blockchain uh, areas. So Ethereum has its own way of doing uh, creating smart contracts. Algorand has the same. The main concept is the same, but the tools that you use to build smart contracts in different blockchains is different. So try to improve your scale on that regard. And, and the one important thing is smart contract testing. It's really important to, have to acquire this knowledge as much as you can if you decide on this career path. So try to improve your scale on testing. And the other will be deployment. So be familiar with how you can deploy uh, smart contracts. Data. The requirements would be have a solid understanding in how blockchain works. In general, have knowledge or, or be at least comfortable in Solidity, Rust. These are languages that you use to build smart contracts in Ethereum blockchain. Uh, JavaScript, Python, PyTIL. PyTIL is not that important if you have a Python uh, knowledge, but it's, it's, it's a better thing to have on your list to also improve your skill on PyTL if you decide to go on the algorithm blockchain area. Uh, in Fura Alchemy, these are tools that we use when we want to deploy our smart contract to the internet. So be familiar or comfortable in these two tools for deployment. Beaker, this is a framework that we have used in the algorithm blockchain. Again, front-end frameworks and back-end frameworks can be really helpful to be more uh, needed or to have more skill in being a full stack developer uh, in this blockchain area. So try to also again the same advice I can give you on frame front end and back in like uh, like I did before. So pick one and try to be as much proficient as much as you can. Uh, possible post positions you can have as a Web3 developer, you can be again a blockchain researcher, since blockchain also means technology, researching jobs you can find, you can be a developer in blockchain, you can design blockchain architecture and stuff like that. So deep developer, if you want to focus on building smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, you can be a blockchain architect, again, on the designing part. You can be a cropped, uh, cryptocurrency developer, which these developers focus only on building tokens and currencies. So they they specialize in this area in tokens and currencies. So you can be that. Uh, you can be Web3 developer, which is the same thing like the others, uh, blockchain consultant. So you have to have a very solid understanding to be a consultant. So it's a position that you can have. And you can be a crypto trader, which doesn't require you to build dApps or anything, but you can also uh, discover the Web3 uh, 
the blockchain technology world as a trader in financial uh, area. So these are the options that you can have as a Web3 in general. So this is my presentation on these two areas. If you have any question, you can go ahead and ask. So is it clear? Maybe you can give for confirmation if you don't have any questions. Okay. So is the form shared? In Penan, is it shared with them? No, I don't think it was shared yet, was it? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I think share. also, yeah, I think it will be maybe it will be shared on Slack or something. Or, um, uh, another thing is also, um, they will be like, uh, probably they will share uh, a G Drive uh, folder with all these materials, so you'll find the slides there. Um, I don't know if they were shared yet or not, but um, they will, they will, it will be shared soon. It wasn't. Okay, so just to give, uh, I should give them some kind of explanation on the form, right? Yes. Maybe just. Yeah, maybe you can go through it uh, a little bit slower than I did, so that if they have any question. So, um, is a form that we have prepared to just to help you assess your skills for both you and us, so we can give you better advice on the track of education. So we have put a detailed uh, tool here to evaluate your skill. So make sure to uh, fill these forms. It can be really helpful for everyone. Uh, so we have put every or every track that we think at, at least as a basic uh, skills you need to have um, or for the four tracks. So make sure to fill all of them and we will uh, assess your response and give uh, give you a solid advice on it and there are some two here like this one deep learning concepts these are just knowledge wise a skill that we want to see if you are familiar with it or not it's not a skill that you will address as poor first these are mainly for a skill that you need to practice on but they are conceptual uh idea that we have we put we are expecting you to answer either you are familiar with it or not familiar with it so these two options familiar and not familiar like it's also specified on the heading here it's just to assess your knowledge level uh, the SQL part and everything we need you to answer from poor to excellent how good you are on the technical side on practical side so uh, you can identify which one are the more knowledge level and skill level. I mean, it's clear, so try to answer those questions uh, based on that. Other uh, than that, I think the form is pretty clear, so make sure to fill it uh, by the end of the day. Okay? So we can have a clear understanding or a clear plan for your career path. So I'm going to share it here, but we also share it on the Slack. I think I share the document again. So in plan, if you have thing to add, you can you can add. Um, no. Um if um, unless they have some questions. Um okay, go ahead okay, Barak. Okay, uh, uh, the first thing we need permission is to access the form, and the second thing will be do we have to fill uh, every row or we have to fill like if we choose generative AI, the generative AI part or data engineering part, since uh, it have uh, a lot of same rows. Uh, okay, you have to fill everything. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Ahmed. So yeah, you have to fill everything because, like, we are asking you also to rate your um, 
your choices so if it's like um uh, if your like your first choice is for example generative ai and your second choice is like for some reason is data engineering um you will rate them like this is my first choice this is the second choice and then you'll have to rate all the skills for 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 all the tracks even though some of them yes they are repeated just like it should be easy just what it will take time from you you is from maybe it's reflecting a little bit of how of your own your on your own skills and what you know or not know um so you have to fill out everything basically in the form um okay any other question no? someone else Okay, Rodolf. Okay, very good. Uh, my question is not related to the presentation. Okay. So, I would like to know if, uh, how long will it be access, you have access to, uh, to the Google Drive, especially for the technical uh, documents? Um. Okay, so this will be, um, I'm, I'm expecting that Rodas will do this. So just, um, she will share with you like on Slack when how to access these materials. Um, so. Okay, yeah, because the reason why I'm asking the question, it is yeah. because uh, uh, for, I don't know if it was uh, the first week, uh, the first project we did, uh, I was about to check that project material and it was missing so i don't know ah, if you... okay you are talking about like the last uh, the material for the last 12 week um, yes for... yes yeah yes, okay yes. okay all right so uh let me check i will see i will see what happened with those okay mm. good. Good. All right. if in, in case we won't have access in the future I uh, just let us know and uh, I will download some of the materials. But if I, you have would, access, I don't need yeah, to. I, so I will just say this. So now I will check, I will see what happened with the material, but I will say that it, it, will, it will be, um, I think it's a good practice to have some backup, backup from the material if you, if you think you're going to want to, to, um, uh, to need to look through uh, in the future or you want to keep them like uh, as a reference or anything just like have a backup uh, copy on your own device or on your own like uh, google drive just do that uh, and uh, but i will check with what happened with the shared material before, from before okay yeah okay good uh, thank you great uh, alexander Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My, my question is regarding to the assessment. Uh, take an example, my track selection is generative AI. And when I try, when uh, the, you evaluate the form, mm -hmm. so my knowledge is mon mon mainly on Web3. Also, I wear selected Web3 in the second choice. So did you or, or do you uh, recommend me to continue Wave 3 or for what purpose you used the evaluation? So yeah, uh, good. Uh, this is a good question. So the, the skills or the level of skills you will assess yourself or you rate yourself on, these are just one factor. What you really want with your desire is, is another factor. That also there is also a question about this on the on the form about like what is your first choice and why you chose this what is your motivation for that uh, so that's that's another factor so your skills are not the only thing your motivation is also important also exactly. what is, mm -hmm. like yeah okay also what is your future do you have a, a plan for your future career like so if you don't see yourself in Web three and also. I think there is some kind of an advice, particularly for Web3, I think that it's like the job market is 
final limited. And um, so you might, even if your Web3 is your first choice, you might be advised. I'm not saying that that's what, what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, um, yeah, maybe even if, if Web3 was your first very choice, uh, you might be advised to rethink it because as they're considering how the job market is right now. So the job market is one thing, like uh, your skills are one thing and your desire is another thing. So these are all factors that have to play into the choice. So this, we are just trying to assess like these different factors. And then I think, um, so you have to fill the form today, but then tomorrow we'll have, there will be more discussion about this. So after your response, uh, we will we will be able to look through your response also, and then there will be a discussion about that. So this, yeah, so your skills alone doesn't, doesn't um, like decide what you have to do, okay? Okay, I understand you. You're not, you will not select only uh, the knowledge, you see the market part and the And also the your, what you, what you want. The exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. That's, how, that's generally how it works, yes. Um, okay. Um, someone else? Was another question? Uh, as for the, so if they said like there's permission, I will, we will share this on Slack. I think it's better than sharing it here. Yeah. Is that the, the right? Meeting. Could someone, sorry? Could someone just check it now and tell me if it's working or not? Uh, uh, the, Is the it form? the form? I, I they don't have, yeah, I've, I've added your emails. Okay, great. Okay. You should be accessing it now. Yeah, it's certainly okay. worked. Okay. okay. Okay, great. All right. Um, right. Um, so this is all right. This is also resolved. Uh, so if there is no more questions, we can end the session here. Uh, of course, we're available. You can um, mention us or like, yeah, on Slack. As always, um, if you have any questions. Um, other than that, uh, thank you for being here and um, have a nice afternoon. Bye. Okay, great. Uh, one thing I would want to add is make sure to submit the form today on time so that we will be able to move forward to uh, getting your application materials uh, ready. We can wrap up the session. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, I think Mubarak has a question. You can speak up. Yeah, when is, when is the next session? I, I guess it's a, after 20 minutes, no? Yes, 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 correct. We will be updating uh, the schedule uh, now. It's kind of repetitive. <laughs> Yeah, but, but it took longer than expected. Uh, sorry, sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. Thank you all.